in the next few videos we are going to compare different shapes. In this video we are going to focus on congruent shapes. Shapes of which the corresponding angles are the same size and corresponding sides the same length are called congruent shapes. Therefore congruent shapes are exactly the same size and shape and can fit on each other. In mathematics we use the symbol of three equal lines to show congruency. So in the example of the two triangles here, triangle ABC and triangle DEF, I can write down that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. It is, however, not always clear that two figures or shapes can fit on each other. Here we have an example of two congruent shapes with equal angle sizes and equal side lengths. The blue shape can be moved six units to the right and then fit perfectly on the green shape. Sometimes it is not only a movement like this. In our next example, the blue figure has to be reflected to form the orange one. In this case, it can be folded on this black line to reflect and fit perfectly on the orange shape. Similarly, our original shape can be reflected over a vertical line and then I will also still form a congruent shape. And I can even rotate a figure. If I rotate the shape 90 degrees, it can be moved to perfectly fit on my pink shape and once again be congruent to each other. So all of these figures are congruent to each other with exactly the same angle sizes and side lengths. In grade 9, you will focus in depth on congruent triangles. But in grade 8, we can still write down what we know about two triangles. In these two triangles, we know that side AB is equal to side CD. I was also given that side AE is the same length as ED and the third pair of sides BE is also equal to EC. Looking at the angle sizes, we can say that angle B is the same size as angle C, which is 66 degrees. Next, we can also see that angle E1 is the same size of 36 as angle E2. And lastly, it was indicated that angle A is equal to angle D. And even if it wasn't indicated, we could accept that angle A would be the same size as angle D, because for both of these triangles, the sum of the interior angles should add up to 180 degrees. And because the first and second pair of angles are already the same, the third pair of angles has to be the same. When we now state that these two triangles are congruent, it is important to ensure that the corresponding angles are written in the corresponding spots. Angle A, which I wrote first, in this case is equal to angle D, which then also has to be written first. Next on the left, I wrote angle B, which in this case is equal to angle C, and that is why C has to also be written second. Then I chose to write E on the left last, and E1 is equal to E2, and therefore E should be the last letter on both sides. You can write any order on the left-hand side, as long as the right-hand side then corresponds with that. In grade 9, we're going to have a look at properties that are only true for congruent triangles.